Hey everyone, it's me. Um, I made a video, then I decided I probably could make a better video. Um, so I'm redoing this video because I just felt the other one, I tend to drag on and on instead of getting to the point. So we're going to talk about getting a Boston guitar sound because so many people have asked me, how do I get my Boston guitar sounds on these cover songs? Well, there is no one Boston sound. Uh, there's many Boston sounds, but they're in kind of a ballpark, you know, like a dartboard where, you know, you get on the dartboard, you're good, you know, but you can't just plug in straight to a Marshall, crank it all the way up and use a Les Paul and play a Boston song. There's more, you know, there's more sculpting to the tone and, and various things going on than just, you know, getting a standard Marshall sound. You know, when when I think of a, just plugging into a Marshall and cranking it up, I think of guitar tones like what Kiss had, you know, in the 70s <clears throat> and early 80s. You know, just that just in-your-face, total presence, very, very punchy, and just, just raunchy, raw kind of sound. But anyway, Boston's is more of a sculpted chainsaw, lots of mid-range and compressed sounding kind of thing. So anyway, it's different sounds. So uh, another thing I didn't mention in my previous attempt was you don't need a Marshall head or cabinet. Uh, you don't need a power soak. You don't need an Echoplex. You don't need a Les Paul. You just need basic, some basic things. All right. You need a double coil pickup. You need uh, a guitar attached to it. And you need... Uh, some sort of plugins or hardware, you know, real gear that you can use to experiment with to try and get at this thing. So I would suggest you at least need some kind of distortion box, distortion pedal. Send that into your amp. Set your amp like, you know, 10% distorted at the most. And do a little sculpting with your amp and then have an EQ after that so you can sculpt some more. And between your amp and the distortion pedal, hopefully you can get a, you know, a pretty good sound. And then with that extra EQ at the end, you can do the, the final sculpting. Anyway, so you don't need particular things to get a Boston sound. You just need a few choices that you can pick from and just turn knobs to you to use find that sweet spot and, and it's very uh very distortion box a, a, a lot more um uh distortion in a preamp kind of way than a power amp you don't want that muddy woofy hendrixy thing going on it's got to be very tight and focused and crisp and so anyway so what i wanted to do was play this uh little piece of long time lick that i played here and then show you how I arrived at that. Uh, not just the, the stuff I've just told you, but showing you the actual components that I picked to get this out. Let me just play it, see if it sounds remotely similar. <laughs> So that's what I have. Um, it may be too much high end. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so here's all the effects in the order that I have them. The guitar runs into a pitch shifter because I'm tuned three frets low. I just pitched it up so it would sound in the same key. For this demonstration, I got a little compression on there so that it sustains a little bit longer. Uh, not quite as much dynamic range, but we don't have to have that on there. It might be even punchier, but uh, we could take it off and listen. It's not much difference, but it, it mainly adds a little bit of sustain because you're compressing it, so the, the sound is going to be initially about the same, but it's going to last longer. Because as the compression stops, then your your sound uh, starts to decay. So it's like it comes further out, and then it starts to decay. So the uh, the main thing that I have going on 
is a distortion pedal, a Tweedman, which is a Fender-ish type of amp, like, oh, Fender Tweed amp, and then a Van Halen 5150 cabinet. I'm using Guitar Rig 5, by the way. All right, so let's get rid of the, um, the right side. I've got stereo, so let's get rid of the right side because we really don't care. We just need to show one way of getting a Boston sound. Let's just, let's just start with, let's try nothing. Take the EQ off. Um, we really don't need any reverb on it to speak of. It just, you know, or delay, actually. I just added those because, you know, Boston's full of delay and reverbs sometimes. Now let's see what the guitar is. Okay, so I'm making mistakes, but basically that's how the guitar sounds just coming into guitar rig. Now, turn this distortion on, and what I've got is, I've got a little volume, a little bit of bass, more mids, more treble, and about half distortion. Then nothing much really boosted or cut too terribly much here, pretty much flat. And, and this is how the distortion sounds. <laughs> So that's already pushing us into that Boston territory. So I chose this distortion out of all the distortions that are available over here. You can see the distortions, Big Fuzz, Cat, which I'm assuming is like the rat distortion. They renamed all these to get uh, make sure they didn't get in legal trouble. Demon, Digital Lo-Fi, Distortion, Fuzz, Gain Booster, ME Zone, I'm assuming that's ME5 by Boss. Mulholland Drive, can't remember what that is. Screamer, that's a tube screamer. Sledgehammer, Trans Amp, uh, and a treble boost. So this has bunches of distortion boxes, but I decided this one sounded more like Boston on the front end, just, just with this one thing alone. Now I run that into an amp, and the amp sounds a little bit distorted, but not much. We got way too much volume coming into this puppy. So it is breaking up just a tad. Now... I've got the Variac cranked up to like 190 volts AC, 180, 190, whatever. And the sponginess is roughly in the middle. And then I've got the response to the left, the bias all the way to the right to try and get a very dynamic sound. Uh, more dynamic would be to get rid of that sponginess with the sag thing. <laughs> And that might help a little bit, but I just decided to leave it in the middle. It's like, it's one of those things that doesn't matter a whole lot. Let's listen. So it doesn't make a huge bit of difference by this time because you're compressing it so much with the distortion. Um, but to, all the way to the left probably is more punchy. Uh, if we just, let's listen to the amp. Just a little bit more punch. So you just, some of these things are just like, man, eh, they're not making a big, big deal. Now this amp, uh, this uh, cabinet is very bright. Now if I chose a, a, a Marshall cabinet, say, oh, let's just do a lead 800. Then, then we would get this kind of sound. Let's put, put it back on the Boston sound. Not bad, not bad. So we can try all these different cabinets out. Uh, we could do the Tweedman cabinet. So it doesn't sound half bad. Put it back on the uh, Van Halen. Way brighter. So it by doing that, it gives me a start point where I don't have to uh, 
you know, crank up so many highs with the EQ or the amps, um, the, the speakers themselves sound brighter. And we could, we could even play around and just turn some of that brightness back down. Listen to it again. So the concept then becomes this. You need a distortion pedal with the certain amount of gain, you know. It's got to have, you know, a decent amount of gain. It can't be fuzzy. It needs to be rounded and, and more like an overdrive. Uh, but it's got to be more than a tube screamer. A tube screamer is not going to cut it. You need something that's got a good bit of distortion and hopefully some EQ, a little bit of EQ on there. But if not, it still needs to have a lot of gain, overdrive. And then a volume knob so you can send a certain amount of actual voltage to your amp. So you don't want to you don't want to blow out the front end of your amp with too much volume from the distortion. So you see where I've got the volume set. If I turn too much of that up, I get too muddy of a sound. So listen. So I'm just way pumping the front end of this amp too much. So I'm losing some of the highs and, and it's getting muddy and cluttered. But if I turn it down too much, it's not getting enough, and mostly the high end is pronounced. So if I turn it up, it gets a little beefier, but not too cluttery. So that's my mindset. It's like, I want to feed the amp just enough where I'm hearing what I think is a good blend of, of beefiness and high end and not cluttery, not overly distorted, you know, especially in that part. If, if that's, if it's, if it just sounds cluttery, it's too much. You're going to have too much volume, back it down some. If it's too cluttery with the, how much distortion, back it down some. I've, I've got the gain less than half on here. And another, another concept is you don't need a lot of gain uh, on some of these classic rock sounds uh, because they just didn't have like mega gain back then. They mostly plugged straight into an amp and whatever gain they had. Or they might have used a, a fuzzy thing on the front end like Hendrix or some of these people. So that's the concept. You get, you get your sound as close as you can here. And of course, you get it as close as you can with your guitar. You need a double coil pickup that sounds something like a Gibson Les Paul pickup, a PAF or, or Gibson patented, you know, double coil pickup. Something that sounds in the ballpark of a Les Paul. And then you run it into an amp. Don't let your amp distort too much or you're going to get mud that way. Like, let me just turn this up. See, it's it's too much, and all of those chugga chuggas are ill-defined, and it just sounds like you're running it through two amps cranked all the way up, and it's just it's too much. It's too much. So you don't want to distort your amp too much. You want to just distort it just a hair. Uh, not too much bass because Boston is a very mid-range thing. Uh, I've actually got the mids kind of not, not too much here. Let's, what, hap what happens if we turn the mids up? It's okay. So that's pretty, you know, so you can push these a little bit here. And then nothing's set in stone. Uh, but this is basically the concept. Distortion, amp. Don't distort this too much. Don't feed the amp too much. Don't distort too much. And use a cabinet that's going to sound bright. Like a, a Marshall cabinet's great. Uh, this 5150 cabinet is much brighter. So that, that one works fine for this setup. And that's how you arrive at a Boston sound. But we need to add in a little more sculpting with this inverted W shape. We're taking out a little more lows, a little of this harsh area here, boosting a little bit more high end. We could even turn that down 
I think. Taking out some of that fuzzy, fuzzy high end after about 10K and boosting a little bit of 5K, uh, 500. Now, with the EQ off, with the EQ on, So now we're in the ballpark. We got rid of a little bit of that harshness right here, boosted some more mids, got rid of some of that rumbly low, and just pump up 5K a little bit. And then... That's about as close as I think I'll be able to get. Now it's just, you know, if you want to give it more body... Uh, come back in here and just play around with uh, maybe send some more uh, of the mids and just a hint of the of the bass. See, you know, and then maybe maybe some more of this, but I wouldn't turn the the distortion part of it. That sounds good to my ears right there. So there's a there's a little video on how I got. Uh, some of these Boston sounds. Uh, I just used mostly guitar rig. Uh, once in a while, I used PV Revolver. Uh, I think for the uh, smoking video, I think I used PV Revolver for that one. So it doesn't matter what you use. What matters is the concept. You need to get this chain of things going and sculpt it with some EQ about like that after the fact to just further sculpt it into that Boston-y area. Uh, then if you add reverb and delay, uh, then you get that. So there you go. I hope that's semi-understandable. Um, and then I got some more stuff on the right side. It's the same concept. I just used an AC-30 instead of the... Uh, Fender Tweed amp. Um, so hopefully that helps if you're looking to get up. You don't need a Marshall. You don't need a Power Soak. You don't need um, a Rockman. That's what I should have said in the first five seconds. You don't need a Rockman. Um, I mean, you can buy one. I just don't think those portable ones sounded uh, legitimate. Um, I'm not sure about the amp heads. Maybe they sounded better. Well, that's about it. Um, so if you have any questions, comments, you can put those in the comment section. And uh, we will uh, see you later. Let me play this Don't Look Back piece, see how it sounds on here. Probably needs a little more reverb. Uh, maybe even some more delay. I don't know why I'm I'm just too picky. More delay. Where's the wet? Oh, here it is. Well, maybe that's enough. I don't know. Let's listen. See if this. And it's probably too distorted. Let me turn down the input. Here we go. Oh, let's add it in stereo. Let's go back to guitar rig and and put the other side in. Uh, here we go. Now we got both sides going. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, let's see how that sounds. So, not bad, not bad. So this sound is, is kind of that Boston thing I think of in my head, but all the songs I did on my channel were all rolled separately each song, I made up a brand new sound. I didn't use the same settings for all those covers. They're all different. Just like Boston songs, they're all slightly different. They don't sound exactly the same. So, uh, that's it. So, uh... Um, it's, it gets you in the ballpark and that's the main thing. Then once you get there, you can lean it to whatever song you're doing and however much distortion you think you need and 
and so on and so forth. So uh, that's it. That's all the wisdom I can give you because I don't know anything. I just turn knobs until my ears are happy. And even then, sometimes I don't get it right. So, like this probably is too trebly. Who knows? Ah, uh, okay, I'm going to shut this off.